Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and applications. Let us quickly recall what we did in the last lecture. In the last lecture, we were trying to do some decompositions. So called it is a singular value decomposition. In continuation to that, today we are going to have a 15th lecture and we will see how actually the singular value decomposition and its competition evolves in order to find out the matrix factorizations. So, let us quickly prove the theorem which is associated with singular value decomposition. Let the coefficient matrix A is belongs to R of Mn, then there exists the orthogonal matrices U such that R of Mn and V of R of N by N square matrix such that the matrix A can be written as product of matrices U multiplied with sigma multiplied with V transpose. So, what are this U sigma V where sigma is an M by N diagonal matrix. See that here sigma is M by N diagonal matrix. The diagonal entries of sigma, the diagonal entries of sigma are all non-negative the diagonal entries of sigma are all non-negative and can be arranged in non-decreasing order. The diagonal entries of sigma are all non-negative and can be arranged in non-decreasing order. So, in order to do that, we will have a, a specialized algorithm called the Golub kahan Reins algorithm. Golub Kahan Reins algorithm especially deals with singular value decomposition competition. A standard algorithm for singular value decomposition. So, how do you prove this Golub Kahan Reins algorithm? It can be proved in two phases. That is called phase 1 which is the direct. So, let us write this matrix A to B where B is equal to this matrix. So, what are these? These are all non-zero. This is all non-zeros and these are all zeros. So, which we call it as bi-diagonal. So, that means essentially the main diagonal is free from zero and this diagonal is free from zero rest are all zeros. It is like this. So, this is bi diagonal. This is bi diagonal. <coughs> Though in the second phase, what we do is, it is an iterative. Second phase it is iterative. So, that is B tends to sigma and where sigma is, see that this is diagonal, these are all zeros. So, that means it is something like, you know, main diagonal 0, 0. This is what is called diagonal matrix. So, everywhere rest are zeros, everywhere rest are zeros and this will become a diagonal matrix. This is the phase 2. Now, let us look at into the phase 1 by diagonalization. In the by diagonalization process, the MIR matrix A M greater than or equal to N is a transformed into an upper triangular bidiagonal matrix by orthogonal equivalence that is 
U belongs to U naught and V naught belongs to R M N and created such that U naught transpose A V naught is equal to B into D, where B is the bidiagonal. B is the bidiagonal matrix. And the form of B is n by n bidiagonal matrix. So, you will have main diagonal, sub diagonal, rest are all zeros. So, this is the bidiagonal. Now, in the phase 2, what we do was the bidiagonal matrix B is further reduced by orthogonal equivalence to a diagonal matrix sigma. That is the orthogonal matrices u1 and v1 are created such that, so that means u1 and v1 are created. Such that u1 transpose bv1 is equal to sigma. That is diagonal of sigma1, sigma2, sigma n. Right in phase 2. The bidiagonal matrix B is further reduced by orthogonal equivalence to a diagonal matrix sigma. That is, the orthogonal matrices U1 and V1 are created such that U1 transpose BV1 will be equivalent to sigma and which is equal to diagonal of sigma1, sigma2, sigma3, sigma n. That is, matrix of singular values where sigmas are singular values. Where sigmas are singular values. Now see that form of the matrix. So these are all non zeros. That way I cannot call it as a matrix A, phase 1. And I write this as this is a non zero matrix, this is a non zero matrix, X of zeros. So this is B is nothing but. B is nothing but U naught transpose A V naught. B is nothing but U naught transpose A V naught. And in the phase 2, what we do is this is the main diagonal and these are all zeros. And this is sigma is equal to U1 times of U1 times of B into V1. So the singular vector matrices U and V are given by this form. That is U is equal to U naught u1 and v is equal to v0 v1. So, what is the remark is in the numerical linear algebra literature, phase 1 is known as the Golub Kahan bidiagonal procedure. Phase 2 is known as Golub Reins algorithm. So, that is the reason that we do call it as Golub Kahan Reins algorithm for both the things together, phase 1 and phase 2. So, in the phase 1, as you see, reduced to bidiagonal form. The matrices U0 and V0 in phase 1 are constructed as the product of householder matrices as follows. So, the matrices U0 and V0 in phase 1 are constructed as the product of householder matrices. That is, U0 is equal to U0 0, U0 1, U0 2, U0 n and V is equal to V0 1, V0 2, V0 3, V0 n minus 2. So, in the step 1 what we do is apply a householder matrix U0 1 to the left of A to create zeros in the position 2 comma 1 through 5 1 then apply another householder matrix V0 to the right to create zeros and then one more position and go on. So, that means you will have a zeros for these things. All are non zeros. So, when you apply U0 0 1, so these things will remain as it is. This is become 0 0. So, all this thing becomes 0. That is what is called A1. So, in the step 2, what we do is apply a householder matrix U0 2, apply a householder matrix U0 2 to the left of A1 and apply the another householder matrix V0 2 to the left to the create zeros in the place syndicated by star. So, these are all things, these things and these are all.
So u02. And in this case, we write it as like this. These are all zeros and these are all zeros. So in this case, we do get like this. Zero, zero. So that means you do have u02, v02, a2. In the step 3, apply householder matrix u03 to the left of a2 to create zeros in the positions indicated by star. So this is the one, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one non zero, this is the non zero. So these are all to be zeros. So when you write u03, so this becomes. 0, 0. This is A3. You do get A3. So, in the step 4, apply householder matrix, apply householder matrix U04 to the left of A3 to create zeros in the positions indicated by this star. So you will have a star, 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 star like this, rest are zeros. So when you write this u04, so this becomes like this, these are all zeros. So this becomes a biodiagonal matrix. This becomes a biodiagonal matrix. So what is the general procedure, general step for n by n matrix? In general, at the kth step, in general, at the kth step, u0k is constructed to create zeros in the kth column. Right? While v0k introduces 0 in the kth row in the appropriate place. That is the basic idea. So, whenever you want to go for the general step, we write in the kth step, u0k is constructed to create zeros. That means, if you have a matrix like this, this one is the main diagonal. Make all these zeros. Make all these zeros below that. So that's what it does mean. Look at this example. Consider the matrix 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. What is the determinant of this matrix? So, if you compute this, you do get a matrix called U1 that is minus of point 1471, minus of point 4423, minus of point 8847, minus of point 4423, point 8295, minus of point 3410, minus of point 8847, point 3410.3180. And when you multiply this U1A, so it would be, look at this, this is the matrix, this is the matrix, this is the matrix and this is 0, below that will be zeros. that is what I was speaking. Similarly over here, if you write here V01, which is, so you look at this, this is the main and this is the one, these are all zeros. these are all zeros in this line. So therefore, essentially, when, you, when I multiply this u01 times of a into v01, so it turns out to be matrix like this. These are zeros. That is a, a of 1, that is first iteration. So step 2, so it becomes 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. These are all 2 by 2 elements. So b is equal to u02 a1. That is equal to u02, u01, ab01. So you will have minus 67823. So like this you will have it. And these are all zeros. Note that from the above expression of b, it immediately follows that 0 is a singular value of a. From the above expression of b, it is immediately follows that 0 is a singular value of a. So from this algorithm, what we can note down is, the A will have a singular values. Well, there are iterative methods for large and square systems. As we already seen, if the matrix is becoming a large system, right, large system, 
So it becomes very difficult in order to find out the solution to the matrix equation. So as I already spoke, so dense systems are very difficult to solve. So we will try to make it into sphere systems where the solutions are possible. So the direct methods based on triangulation of matrix CA becomes prohibitive in terms of computer time and storage of matrix A is quite large. Secondly, there are practical situations such as the discretization of partial differential equations where the matrix size can be as large as several hundreds of even more such problems, direct methods becomes impractical. So you will not be able to find out solution to those things. Furthermore, most large problems are spares. So once the matrix becomes spares, where the zeros are dominated, so it is uh, possible to find out the solution to those systems. So roughly let us define a matrix is spares as a matrix with few non-zero entries and a large number of zeros entries. Unfortunately, the sparsity gets lost to a considerable extent during the triangulation procedure so that at the end we deal with a very large matrix with too many non-zero entries and storage becomes crucial. So when you are talking about the sparse matrices, it is good. You can find out the solution to those things. But a matrix is roughly, you will have in sparse matrix few non-zero rows and large number of zeros. The essentially, zeros are dominated. Unfortunately, the sparsity gets loses. That means the zeros are the dominance of zeros gets larger during triangulation procedure, so that at the end we deal with very large matrix with too many non-zeros, and it pertains to what we call a dense matrix, where the solution becomes very difficult. So, for these problems, it is advisable to use iterative methods that never alter matrix A and requires the storage of only a few vectors of length n at a time, these methods unlike the direct methods to not produce an exact solution but rather an aim at iterative to imposing the problems. One is the Jacobi method, Gauss-Seidel method and successive or relaxation method. So analogous to this there is a, another one called Krylo subspace, conjugate gradient for symmetric positive different matrices and generalized minimal residual matrices, GMRESS method, biconjugate gradient method, quasi-minimal residual method, extreme eigenvalues of large and sparse systems. So that means there are many more methods apart from this Gauss-Jacobi method, Gauss-Seidel method and successive relaxation method and you have a cover of subspaces method and so on and so forth. So with this I stop my lecture. We will look into the Gauss-Jacobi and Gauss-Seidel in the next lecture. Thank you very much.